The designations Mississippian and Pennsylvanian are used by geologists in North America to denote the time between 358.9 and 298.9 million years ago. In other regions of the world, geologists refer to these two eras as the Carboniferous period. This portion of rocks is only readily divided between a younger and older sub-period in North America. The North American and Eurasian continents were once part of Laurasia, a northern supercontinent that existed during the Mississippian period. Because the two regions were linked at the period, the similarities between Carboniferous rocks from Europe and North America are not a coincidence. The southern supercontinent of Gondwana was formed by the Union of South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Antarctica. Laurasia was near the equator, hence polar glaciation was negligible. On exposed land, tropical rainforests and swamps with plants that would eventually become coal beds thrived, and shallow tropical seas covered extensive areas of what is now the United States Midwest and South. Throughout the American Midwest, Mississippian marbles and limestones are exposed, containing fossils of flower-like invertebrates known as crinoids, intricate corals, and other Paleozoic carbonate creatures. Talking about the fossils in this region, limestones, which originated largely during the Mississippian period, are the most prevalent rocks in Rock Canyon. The Mississippian limestones that make up the canyon walls were deposited in a shallow warm sea that covered the area for millions of years. The layered sedimentary rocks are primarily thinly bedded limestones that formed in a basin that was subsiding owing to crustal extension. The cliffs have a few strata of shale and sandstone. The classic sedimentary rocks show sea level variations across wide swaths of the continent. Calcium carbonate makes up limestone and when it comes into touch with a 10% hydrochloric acid solution, it effervesces. One way to detect limestone in the field is to use this procedure. About the flora and fauna, diverse scrawny treeless woodlands replaced Devonian forests dominated by a single tree species, Archaeopteris, in the early Mississippian era. As time proceeded, a more luxuriant vegetation emerged, with huge horsetails, tree ferns, and conifer-like trees becoming commonplace. Arthropod herbivores and detrivores such as millipedes and newly developed flying insects found plenty of food in the new vegetation. Amphibians evolved into many different species, both semi-aquatic and completely terrestrial, that fed on the abundant arthropod fauna and or each other. Sea lilies dominated the oceans, and reptiles and plants began to sprout on land. Crinoids and blastoids, as well as corals, arthropods, and mollusks, thrived in shallow, warm oceans. The Mississippian era is also known as the Age of Crinoids, because crinoids and their cousins, blastoids, were very common in North America. Because crinoids are filter feeders, the oceans must have been quite clean, and their skeletons require high calcium carbonate concentrations, implying a warm water climate. In these shallow oceans, bryozoans and brachiopods prospered as well, but trilobites continued to dwindle. Ammonoids grazed in and on the less mobile animals' meadows. Sharks were particularly prevalent among the fish, while colocanths, acanthidians, and lungfishes were among the bony fish. The period's unrestricted contacts across continental shelves resulted in a marine fauna that was widely scattered over the globe. The early Mississippian era saw the Earth in a greenhouse climate state with warm temperatures over much of the globe, with increasing sea levels. It eventually got cooler with increasing cover of lush green plants. Thereafter, the climate remained cooler and pleasant, supporting the growth of rich flora and fauna. Lastly, about the people of the era, horticulturists were common among Mississippians. Many of their foods were grown in tiny gardens using rudimentary equipment like stone axes, digging sticks, and fire. Plants such as corn, beans, squash, sunflowers, goosefoot, sumpweed, and others were grown. They also ate natural vegetation and animals, harvesting nuts and fruits and shooting small game like deer and turkeys. Fish, shellfish, and turtles were also harvested from Mississippian rivers, streams, and ponds. Mississippians, unlike modern humans, spent much of their time outside. Their homes were primarily utilized for refuge from the elements, sleeping during the winter months, 
and storage. By the mid-16th century, archaeologists had recorded the abandonment of major Mississippian ceremonial sites and several subsidiary mound complexes in Alabama's Black Warrior Valley, a period known as the Fall of the Mississippian Tradition. People were relocated from the mound sites to nucleated settlements in the river valley. European illnesses, social and economic breakdown, and soil depletion have all been proposed as causes for these shifts. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to Explified. See you in the next one.